Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one I want to give you my initial impressions of AMD's new entry level Athlon 200GE APU. Now at £50 here in the UK or $55 US dollars, it's clear to see that this APU is designed to compete with Intel's entry level Pentium chips and I've had a couple of days to uh, test it out for myself in my personal system and I want to share my findings or thoughts with you today. Now this isn't a full review, uh, rather my, as I say, first impressions of using this entry level chip, but I do hope to uh, put together a cheap system using this APU very soon in which I will give you a lot more results, but I have managed to test a couple of CPU intensive tasks as well as a few games today as well. So. Without further ado, let's talk about the results and discuss who I think this processor may appeal to. So if we talk about the actual CPU power of this thing, then it will fall slightly short of Intel's entry level G4560. That is a little bit more powerful CPU wise, but I think you'll agree that the real star of the show here, or the trick up the sleeve of the 200GE, is certainly the onboard Vega 3 graphics. But the question is, how good are these onboard Radeon graphics, and are they enough to allow you to play games uh, at 720p or maybe even 1080p resolutions? Well, let's jump into a few results and talk about that right now. So for these tests I decided to compare the 200GE to its older brothers, the Ryzen 3 2200 and the Ryzen 5 2400 to see what sort of comparative results you could expect. I decided to go with 2666MHz memory as that's the fastest supported by the 200GE and I decided to use that with the other APUs as well to make it more of a fair test. Even though if you're thinking about going with one of the faster chips, you may decide to opt for slightly faster 3200 MHz DDR4 instead. Now we didn't exactly get off to a fantastic start with Far Cry 5, 720p with the low settings and the resolution modifier kept at 100% or 1 in the in-game settings. Here the uh, AMD Athlon 200GE wasn't able to quite make 30 frames per second and as you can see when we compare that to both the Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 it does fall slightly short. Turning the resolution scale down though to 70% or 0.7 in the in-game menu will grant you closer to 30 frames per second and therefore give you a sort of playable experience though bear in mind there will be a few stutters here and there and the game will be one big pixely mess but let's not focus too much on what this thing can't do as opposed to what it can do because there are other titles that this thing will happily play even at reduced 720p resolution. One such example of this is Rainbow Six Siege. Now we did have to turn things down to 720p and use the low preset but we did average just over 50 frames per second. I had no idea that this game would run so well on this APU but it seems to be a fairly optimised title and I've had a good bit of luck with it even with other older hardware too. So while it's quite the surprise to see it running so well on the 200GE here, it's not all that unexpected. Bear in mind though that when using the Ryzen 3 2200G you will see the results pretty much double nearly. Now I also tested Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, with 720p resolution. Now this was a title that could have been capable of being run at 1080p I have to admit, although it would have been closer to 30 frames per second. 720p with the normal settings and a couple of things set to high and we were able to see a pretty respectable average. Once again in comparison to the Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 APUs, the 200G does fall slightly short of those performance margins but that's to be expected. I mean, this thing costs 55 US dollars, half the price of the Ryzen 3 2200G, and in turn will more or less get you half the performance in some situations. Just like the first game we tested today, Far Cry 5, PUBG didn't really run all that well either. At 720p with the low in game settings, we only saw 25 FPS here on this specific map. Now I did test a couple of games and we weren't quite able to achieve that solid 30 FPS threshold which the uh, Ryzen 3 2200G and Ryzen 5 2400G are both capable of. That being said I think a lot of people who go for this chip 
gaming may not necessarily be their main focus, but it's nice to know that if you want to jump into some uh, slightly less demanding titles, you will be able to do so and still have an okay experience, even if you have to turn the resolution down. So let's move on to the next game. Overwatch with a combination of low and medium settings once again ran at above 45 FPS most of the time. There were a couple of frame drops here and there. Now I'm not sure if this was down to uh, drivers or not. This is a pretty new chip so a few things may have to be worked out with future driver releases. But I have to say that it was a pretty decent overall experience. Especially when you consider that once again this is a £50 or £55 US dollar chip. Um, I do have to keep repeating myself because it's quite unbelievable to think how far AMD's APUs have come. I mean, you're getting a pretty decent CPU and a fairly decent GPU in a pretty cheap package, and that's nice to see, and it makes me really look forward to uh, seeing what the future of these AMD APUs hold. Finally, when it came to running Fortnite, this was easily achievable on the low settings, so I decided to crank things up a little more. We set a couple of things to medium, one or two settings were on high, and we were able to stick with that 30 FPS average. There will be a few instances where you do drop below 30 FPS, but if you do decide to run the game with the lowest settings, I mean everything on low, then you shouldn't really see that many drops below 30. Here, with the settings that I used, 30 FPS was still more than achievable. I think the 200 GE did a pretty good job. Now after I was done with gaming, I decided to edit this very video using the Athlon 200 GE, and I have to say the experience was a pretty decent one. In the past, I've used the Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 2200 and 2400 G to edit and render videos. I've had a pretty decent experience. It won't be the fastest editing and rendering experience in the world, but if you're looking for an entry level editing system, perhaps you just want to start out on YouTube, uh, you need to make a few videos, or you've just got a school project, something like that, you need to throw something together. The 200 GE should still be fairly capable of doing so. In fact, it did a lot better than I thought it would, if I'm being 100% honest. Of course, a lot of comparisons will be drawn against things like the G4560. In terms of raw processing power, that would probably be the one to go for. That being said, I think the 200 GE offers the more well-rounded package. Yes, the CPU is a little weaker than that of Intel's Pentium variants, but the onboard graphics more than make up for it. There is a little bit of an elephant in the room in terms of the 2200 G. I mean, you have to ask yourself as to whether you can afford the extra 50 pounds or dollars, because if you can, I don't think there'd be a point in going for the Athlon. I mean, the extra 50 pounds or dollars will pretty much double your performance or close to that in some instances. So if gaming's more of your thing, then that will definitely have to be a consideration of yours. Could you perhaps go with slightly slower and perhaps slightly cheaper memory or opt for a slightly cheaper motherboard and extend your budget a little bit so that you can get the Ryzen 3 2200G instead. That may be worth considering, as I say, if gaming is one of your priorities, but you don't have all that much to spend. What also annoys me a little bit about the Athlon is that it's locked. I mean, if this had been an unlocked chip, then it, it would have been a total victory, I feel, for this thing. You could have overclocked it, say, to perhaps 3.8 gigahertz, 3.9 gigahertz, within the same level that the Ryzen APUs can get to and it would have probably wiped the floor with the G4560 in terms of processing power as well. So it's just a little bit of a shame that we can't overclock this chip, but you know, it's an entry level uh, piece of kit and I have a feeling that AMD might introduce another Athlon. It will have overclocking capabilities and it will probably be priced at £20 or $20 more. That's just an anticipation of mine, that's just a guess, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see something like that in the future in which case that would be the one to buy, but we'll just have to wait and see. As for the Athlon though, for the price, it does a pretty decent, well-rounded job. Someone who wants an entry-level processor that can really handle itself in some CPU-intensive tasks and is good for basic editing and rendering needs, as well as someone who wants to play a few games when they're bored, albeit at reduced settings and resolution. I think it's a pretty decent choice to get yourself onto that new AM4 platform. But as I say, consider whether or not you can spend the extra, get the 2200G instead, because you may feel like you've missed out 
or you may regret it later on if you don't go for the slightly faster Ryzen APU. Thank you so much for watching this first impressions video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's helped you make a decision as to what chip you want to buy if you're looking at a AMD AM4 based CPU. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next video.